Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, on Roku, Dwyer Boxing, and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. I think the odds are compelling. I like David Lemieux over Hassan Njiko. Right now, David Lemieux is a minus 164 favorite. And Jekum is a plus 135. I say in Jekum, you may know him as Hassan Endam. Right? Let's talk about styles. And let's talk about the secret to the fight. Uh, David Lemieux is very front foot heavy. He's what I call a mid-range hooker. Right? He's not as subtle as Janady Golovkin. Just consider him to be a bigger more reckless version of Danny Garcia. Understand though that he has one of the biggest punches in boxing. Right? He's lost twice. In one of those fights he had Marco Antonio Rubio in serious trouble. Serious trouble. But Rubio, a vet, was able to hit him with straighter power shots. Right? Power shots. And he was able to get Lemieux, who was unbeaten at the time, to quit. His corner called off the fight, right? Lemieux then went out his very next time out. And he actually fought a guy, Alcine, who used to be a champion in, let's say, 2007. Now understand, Alcine is an interesting fighter. He recently got a draw with Delvin Rodriguez. This guy's a master chess player. He was able to deconstruct David Lemieux, who at the time was a bit raw and a bit predictable. Now he's still a bit predictable, but he's more experienced. And the secret to this fight, in my opinion, it's the big secret in the room, it's the elephant in the room, is that Lemieux has pretty good foot speed. Right? In other words, he'll be able to track Endem around the ring. Now, what I want people to realize is that the fight is in the Bell Center. It's in Lemieux's backyard. In my opinion, Endem, who got knocked down several times by Peter Quillen, and that's the fight you need to look at. Right? And Quillen doesn't have Lemieux's foot speed. Right? Endem, to me, has a chin that's an open question because of that Quillen fight, right? I believe he gets knocked down in another fight too, the Giovanni Lorenzo fight. Double check me on that. But Endem doesn't have the kind of power, in my opinion, to keep Lemieux off of him for 12 rounds. Lemieux's going to push the issue. Understand Endem right now, and he's an excellent fighter. He's a cute fighter who uses a jab, uses feints, uses movement. He's a mover, right? He's throwing combinations from the outside. But Curtis Stevens just went the distance against him, right? The fight before that, that fighter, I believe it's Zuniga, goes the distance against him, right? And then to me, isn't a heavy puncher, right? He's a guy who'd prefer to beat you on points from the outside. I think it's going to be a bad visual for him because the crowd in Canada likes action, right? Think about their fighters. Adonis Stevenson, he's an action fighter, right? Lucien Boutte, contrary to what the United Kingdom thinks, he's an action fighter. Jean Pascal, he's an action fighter, right? Arthur Beterbiev, who's fighting out of Canada these days, he's an action fighter. Understand, this is a savvy crowd. Lemieux is much more loved than, let's say, people outside of Canada realize. Because Canadians are openly asking themselves, would this guy have a shot on Janady Golovkin? Right? They know that he just went through Gabe Rosado. Right? I think what's going to happen is the crowd is going to be behind Lemieux. I think Lemieux is going to go hunting. The other thing, too, is Lemieux has the mindset of a hunter. 
understand a lot of the cute things that Endem does that a fighter who reads feints might be discouraged by, right? Because feints work because of the implied threat behind them. A guy like Lemieux is going to ignore. It got him in trouble against Marco Antonio Rubio because Rubio can punch, right? Understand in Kelly Pavlik's prime, Rubio gave Pavlik all he could handle for several rounds before getting stopped later in that fight. Rubio can punch. That's his game. I don't believe that's Endem's game. So I believe what you're going to have is a guy hunting Endem, Endem fainting like he's going to throw a right hand, and Lemieux not caring because Lemieux is going to believe that he can take that right hand. He's also going to believe, and Lemieux's two-handed, that Endem can't take his punches. Understand, it's been several fights since Lemieux has not had a KO. Understand Lemieux's KO percentage is north of 85%. This guy, simply put, is one of the most exciting, biggest punching guys in the sport. So, I'm expecting Lemieux here to get at least one knockdown in the fight. Understand, there is a chance that Lemieux wins by decision, right? Understand, Endem got off the canvas several times against Quillen and went the distance against Kid Chocolate, one of the bigger hitters in that area code, right? When I say area code, I mean weight range, right? Understand, Endem is a warrior who will get up off the canvas, don't assume that if the fight goes to a decision, Endem necessarily wins it. And let's face it, if anybody gets knocked out in this fight, I would say it's going to be Endem. Obviously, Lemieux has a chance to KO anyone in any fight. The guy hits that hard. I like Lemieux over Endem, right? Understand, though, that the odds makers have this fight priced competitively. Right, Lemieux a minus 164. Understand on BoxRec.com, they give this fight its highest rating, five star. Understand it's a high risk fight. Right, but also understand this is the gambling part of the internet. I like David Lemieux over Hassan Endem. Let's shift gears to Janady Golovkin for a moment. Now, longtime viewers know that I believe Golovkin has a problem against shorter fighters who can fight inside, right? Who can also move. One such fighter, a guy who I believe even today is underrated. He's one of the dominant fighters of this era. He's only lost once, and it was to a fighter he beat before, right? We can debate that all night, right? Timothy Bradley has said he's willing to fight Golovkin at 160. Research Bradley's history. You're going to find that Bradley used to weigh more than he weighs now. Understand, too, that Bradley doesn't have to weigh 160 to fight Golovkin. Right? Also, Golovkin isn't physically big at 160 like, let's say, someone like Andy Lee. Right? Or Peter Quillen. If Peter Quillen, of course, can make 160 again. So, if that fight gets made, people here online always say, who could beat Golovkin? Who could beat Golovkin? I believe Miguel Cotto gives Golovkin all he can handle. I believe Timothy Bradley gives Golovkin all he can handle. I like Bradley in his next fight over Jesse Vargas. Then let's hope Golovkin pivots toward Bradley because I think that would be a tremendous fight. Let me say this too. Floyd Mayweather, according to some reports here online, claims that he believes he could beat Janady Golovkin. Right? Okay, great. Make that fight happen. You can't announce that you're going to leave the sport Claim you can beat guys and then not fight them. 
right? Oddly enough, because of Styles, I actually believe Cotto and Bradley would fare better against Golovkin than Floyd Mayweather, right? I believe Mayweather is better on his back foot, even though Mayweather's a switch, right? I believe Bradley is the kind of guy who can come inside on Devin Alexander when Devin was unbeaten and can get his head so close to Alexander's head that you had the same kind of fight that you had when Evander Holofield fought Mike Tyson, right? In the fight in which Tyson gets dropped, right? The fight before the ear-biting fight. Understand, guys who can get inside on big hitters, right? Think about Mike Tyson. Huge puncher with both hands, just like Golovkin. But Holofield figured out that if he put his head on Tyson's chest, if he got his head inside Tyson's range, Tyson wouldn't have enough space to operate. Right? I believe Bradley, who's shorter than Golovkin, would be able to get inside on Golovkin and then would be able to go to work on Golovkin's mid range. Uh, Mid cage. Now I'll agree, Bradley doesn't have a big punch, but understand there would be a David versus Goliath feel to that fight. And as Wilt Chamberlain once said, nobody roots for Goliath, right? I think Golovkin would be exposed. I think as that fight got to the later rounds, there'd be a buzz in the crowd for Timothy Bradley. With Cotto, it's interesting because Cotto has the punch. Right, so with Cotto, the question would be, could Golovkin somehow avoid getting hit in the ribs with Cotto's left hook? Because I'm telling you, we saw it in the Bernard Hopkins, Oscar De La Hoya fight. Sometimes a fighter can physically be ready to fight. Golovkin can come in and be a warrior. You get hit in the liver at the wrong time, and your legs will just go on you for 10 seconds. Take a look at Oscar De La Hoya when he's on the canvas against Bernard Hopkins. He's fully conscious. He's so conscious, he's actually pounding his glove on the canvas. That's how bad it is. His legs just wouldn't move. Right? I don't believe Golovkin, who has a hunter's mentality. He's like Lemieux. Right? These guys expect to shoot you. They don't expect you to shoot them. Right? A guy like that with Miguel Cotto on his ribcage... Are you sure he's going to know what to do? Are you sure he's going to know how to, you know, cover up his, you know, ribs like Floyd Mayweather did against Cotto? I'm not so sure. So, if you want to know who might be able to beat Golovkin, before you look at Lemieux, take a look at Cotto and Bradley. Right? Sometimes being a shorter fighter helps you right styles make fights some taller guys can't handle shorter guys also big punchers right huge punchers like Mike Tyson can actually get deconstructed from the inside out as opposed to a fighter beating him with a jab and punches from outside like Buster Douglas Right? Take a look at how Holofield fought Tyson. Tell me why here in the comment section of this video. You don't believe Miguel Cotto or Timothy Bradley can't do that to Golovkin. Also, how much do you know about Golovkin? Haven't you been fed a bevy of fights where guys are just falling down early? We know more about David Lemieux, who at least was stretched into the later rounds by guys like Rosado than we know about Golovkin. I believe the fight to look at in analyzing this Endem Lemieux fight is Endem against Quillen. And I believe the fight to look at in analyzing Golovkin against Cotto or Bradley is the Golovkin against Hassan... Oh, gee, I forget the guy's name. Well, put it this way. Look it up. Um, it was an interesting fight. Hassan something. And I'm just telling you, Golovkin gets pushed into the later rounds. Did not look good.
goes through about a three round stretch in that fight where he's absolutely befuddled on how to handle Kasim Uma. That's the guy. On how to handle Kasim Uma. Thanks for stopping by. Hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video.